Hello and welcome to this Crossfire Quick Tip. Well, it's actually not just about Crossfire, it's about anything that uses this style of kind of linear antenna. Now, those of you that have been watching for a long time will see lots of things with Crossfire on. In fact, I have an entire series that goes through everything all around Crossfire. So if you're interested in this long range system from Team Black Sheep, go and have a look at that. There's some exciting things coming in development uh, by the sound of it from TBS. So it looks like this is going to be an even more interesting system to use in the future. But the reason for this video is because you may have spotted, if you are very eagle eyed, that the antenna that's been on my AR wing build has moved. Now, originally it was in this horizontal position and now it's in this vertical position. And why have I moved it? And actually, there's a really good reason for this, both for putting it horizontally initially and for putting it vertical. And there's lots of confusion around this. So I thought it was worthwhile me making a very quick video to explain why things have changed. Now, as I mentioned, this isn't unique to Crossfire. The way it works is that when the antennas are in the same orientation, so it's horizontal and horizontal, then you're getting the best signal. As one of the antennas starts to move out of phase, you lose more and more signal as the signal becomes cross-polarized until you that is the worst case. However, it's not just the worst case because there are kind of dead spots in the sensitivity of the antennas at the ends. So here on each end of this antenna, uh, it's not very sensitive. It's great this way, great that direction. So if you think of cutting an apple in half and then drawing a line between the two indents at the top and bottom, that's kind of the shape that's coming out of both of these antennas. Now, that does mean that if you are unlucky enough to be flying your model far enough away and you actually have one of these dead spot ends pointing at the other antenna, then you're going to have a really bad reception. Now, most of the time when we're flying things like this, this quadcopter, uh, this is one of my armatans here that's built with a Crossfire Immortal T at the bottom. Uh, most of us kind of fly either with it here or out on the arm and we don't have any problems, but then we're flying relatively close in. And ideally, you're always going to be at a situation where you're close enough to not have a problem. However, if we look at the wing, I have been having a little bit of a problem. So let me demonstrate why I installed initially the Immortal T antenna in a crosswise direction with this very expensive high tech visual aid that I've made here. So this is the Immortal T as it was originally installed, installed horizontally. And that is because um, the idea with this model wasn't to fly it about, it was to fly it um, in one straight line, both away from and then straight back to me as the pilot. And that means that I'm getting the best possible reception at all times. It also means that the antenna is out the way, so in the event of a landing, nothing's going to get caught on the grass. However, I found I haven't actually been flying the wing like that. When I've been flying it normally and I've been flying around myself or doing turns in front of myself, then I am coming regularly into the situation where one of those dead spots at the ends of the antenna on the model is pointing directly at my antenna on the ground. And I'm getting warnings about low RSSI. So to fix that, what I've done is I've taken it off and I then have mounted it vertically through the wing. And what that means is that I have to then have my antenna on the radio mounted vertically as well. So they, they are in alignment for the majority of the time. And now it means when the model is banking around me that none of those dead spots is directly pointing at me. And that gives me a much better bit of reception. So that's the key, really. Although we might mount it horizontally for things like quads that we're using relatively close in, uh, that's going to be absolutely fine. On something like a wing, unless you are literally going to be just flying away and flying back to you, then vertical is probably better. However, you can see here, I did 3D print a little protector for the lower part of the antenna just to stop it getting damaged if I don't land on nice soft grass. But hopefully that's interesting. Always make sure that however you have the receiver antenna, whether it's horizontal or vertical, the antenna on your Crossfire module is mounted the same way to give you the best possible signal all the time. 
Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.